Well, good evening to everybody. We are so very sorry that we're getting started just a little bit later than what we normally do. <laughs> you know, we normally get started right at 7 o'clock, so we were just running a little bit behind on this evening, so we certainly apologize to you for that. But that means that God is going to do something exciting, so I tell you what, just Give God a hand clap of praise wherever you are at. We're going to praise him that it is another Thursday evening, and we thank him that we have the privilege to gather all over, wherever you're at, all over in his presence to focus on what he has to say on this evening. So we praise God for that. I tell you what, just go ahead and bow your heads where you're at. We will pray, and then we'll get right into the lesson. Dear great God of heaven, there is nothing that we can do without you, and we're thankful that we know that. Do anoint us to hear. Do anoint us to speak. Anoint us to teach. It's in the wonderful and beautiful and magnificent supernatural name of Jesus that we pray. Everybody shout amen. Okay, so we'll go ahead and jump right into this lesson now. Notice I'm going to make this statement, listen to this, and you should see it on the screen. Um, there were two different groups. Now, you want to get this down pat. There were two different groups, two separate groups that went in the wrong direction around the beginning of time. Now you want to be able to know as much as you can about these two groups. Are you listening? There are two different groups, two separate groups. They were not the same, and both of them went in the wrong direction right around the beginning of time, and so I'm pretty sure that you probably already know about the two groups that we are going to be speaking about. So, notice the topic is going to be group A and group B. So that's going to be the title of the, the lesson on this evening. Group A, that's one of the groups. And then group B, that's the other group. Okay, so now let me just go ahead and let you know those know about those two groups who belongs to which group notice this if uh, I can get my clicker to <laughs> clicking here we will in just a second let you know about those two groups so it's going to at least give you the name of these two groups. So we're looking at these two groups. Notice this. One group, we'll go ahead and give you the name, and then we'll just kind of catch back up. That'll still work until you can see it on the screen. So one group is called angels, and like I said, I'm pretty sure that you have already guessed the two groups that messed up around the beginning of time. One group was angels, and the other group we're going to classify and call Adam or simply man. So both of those two groups messed up right around the beginning of time, and we want to make sure we Talk about these two groups. Okay, so now God referred to the group called Adam as man. He referred to the group called Adam as man. So now what we're going to look at is uh, Genesis chapter 5 and verse, verses 1 through 2. And so now... It says, this is the book of the generation of Adam. 
In the day that God created man, notice that, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them, so listen to it, and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Okay, so this is important because uh, as we are going to get ready to look at these two groups, although they both messed up, God handled their mess up in different ways. Group A messed up the angels, which at one time all of the angels could, could rightly be classified as holy angels. But when they failed and decided to do something different, then uh, they are now referred to as demons or the unholy angels. So they messed up the angels and Adam. So they both went in wrong directions. But the ironic thing is that when the angels messed up, God handled their situation, their wrongness. He handled it differently from the way he handled Adam's sin or mess up. And uh, so let me just go ahead and give you and let you know about a five-star sentence. Now listen to this as we look at both of those, as we think about both of those two groups. Man, which belongs to group B, man was forgiven for what he did. He found forgiveness. The angels being led by Lucifer, who is now referred to as the devil, Beelzebub, that old serpent, the devil, the angels were not forgiven. So both groups, group A, the angelic group, and group B, the Adam or the Adamic group, both messed up, both did wrong. But the way God responded to the angels messing up and the way he responded to Adam or man messing up was two different things. Again, the five-star sentence is, man was forgiven, the angels were not. So, in all that I thought, in all that I thought in... Uh, knew about and all of my Bible reading and all of my Bible reading uh, I would not have thought that God would forgive some and not forgive others now I would not have thought that so now listen to that I wouldn't have thought that uh, God would have done that. Now, let me just backtrack just a bit since uh, you can see the screen. Now, I want to go back over that since you can see the PowerPoint presentation. On Well, so I thought you could see it, but apparently you can't. So I will just keep right on talking and we will just pull all of this together. Uh, so you'll be able to see the PowerPoint. But in the meantime, everyone who's listening, Mount Pisgah and uh, anybody else who's viewing, just listen along with us as we talk. And, and then also, if you have already downloaded the lesson, then go ahead and look at the lesson. And uh, so you'll be able to, and some persons have come by and picked up the lesson as well. So, but now, uh, and all, let me just repeat this. And all that I thought I knew, and all of my Bible reading, everyone, I uh, thought that uh, God would not have forgiven some, but not forgiven others. I mean, that just simply blew me away. They both messed up. 
the angels and Adam. Now, listen to uh, 2 Peter, verse 4 of the second chapter of 2 Peter. Now listen to this. It says, For if God spare not the angels that sin, meaning that when they sin, they were not offered or, or given forgiveness, for if God spare not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So now listen to this. When they messed up, when they sinned, immediately, immediately, they experienced some consequences which were not reversible. You couldn't turn them around. But now keep in mind when we talk about group B, they found, they found forgiveness. Okay, so, question. Why would God do such a thing? Why would God do such a thing? I guess we need to ask, why is there no forgiveness for the angels? Because as I said, I would have thought that um, God would just have offered forgiveness, carte blanche, but he didn't. Okay, so listen to this and follow along on your paper since it's not on the screen as of yet. Listen to this. Once an angel, once an angel decided to go wrong, and again, the question is, why would God do such a thing? Why is there no forgiveness for the angels? Once an angel decided to go wrong, they were there, everyone, when God created and threw out his master plan for the creation of the universe. They were there. Once an angel decided to go wrong, God did not provide a way for them to get back right. Jesus did not come. Now listen to this. Jesus did not come and die for the angels to be forgiven. He only died, everyone, for man, for Adam, for Adam's progeny to be forgiven. So, this means, everyone, that, again, there was no forgiveness for what they had done. So, now, somewhere around the beginning of the time, which we don't know that specific timetable, but two separate groups, group A and group B, went wrong or sinned, but what we find to our amazement is that there were two separate consequences. So now notice, group A, which as we said, are angels. Group A, notice on your screen, group A discovered that there was no forgiveness for what they had done. The angelic group. Satan and his demons. There was no forgiveness for them. They were, some of them were placed in chains of darkness and some of them are loose today. But they're not greater than uh, the power that resides in us. So we're not afraid of Satan and his demons. They have already been defeated by Jesus. God has given us power to trade upon serpents and trade upon scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy, we praise the Lord for that. Now, group B. Group B discovered just the opposite. Group B discovered and found that there was amazing forgiveness for what they had done. So you would have to ask yourself, everyone, and in order to understand our Bibles better in 2021, in order to get a better understanding of what God uh, did way back when and, and as we go back to man's beginning, 
We're men, women. We're under the umbrella of Adam, so we want to find out all that we can and know all that we can about us. We have to go back and trace this. We have to look at angelic sin and Adam's sin. Now, listen to this. Now, ask yourself this. Okay, preacher man, why is this important? Now, it has some uh, residual effects. Why is it important? Now, the importance, let me tell you about the importance the revelation and the practical application. How do we apply what we just uh, got through mentioning, what we previously talked about? How is it applicable? How do we apply it? What difference does it make that God didn't forgive the angels, but he forgave man? Now notice this. This is extremely important because, now notice and read along with me on the screen, because God really wants us the group called Adam, the group called man, human beings. He created millions of species, but now he treated one of those species differently from how he treated every other species that he made. Whether it's plants or oceanic life, he treated one species differently. Now, again, we're going to read it. This is extremely important because God really wants us to know how much he loves man. He doesn't love the angels the same way that he loves man. As we said, Jesus didn't step out of eternity into time to come die for angels. Guess what he did that for? Guess who he did that for? He did it for man. And once you receive that revelation about how much God loves man in comparison to everything else that he made, then you will discover how much God personally loves you. Now listen, there is this big umbrella, this big congregant, this big congregation of humans. Eight billion people populate our globe. But listen. Out of the 8 billion people that populate the, the globe, do you know that? God has the hairs, listen to this, God has the very hairs on your head numbered. What does that mean? That God not only, God not only loves the people on the Australian continent, on the continent of Europe or Asia or Africa, he doesn't love them more than he loves somebody on the North American or the South America continent. Listen, God loves you wherever you're at right now. Although he created man and there are 8 billion people that populate the earth, God loves man so much that he separated the two groups, group A and group B. But not only that, friend, he loves you. You personally so much. You have to get this revelation. That's why this is important. We want you to see the overall big picture that, yes, God loves man. He loves the human race. But he took that a step further. If you had been the only human being that would have received Jesus and everybody else would not have, Jesus would have still come to die for you. That's how much Jesus loves you. Now, that's why it's important. You want to see the, the contrast here. How much God loves you more than anything else that he created. And so notice this. We will go ahead and kind of just backtrack and make sure we get a clear understanding. So we're going to talk about angelic sin and then we're going to talk about Adam's sin. Okay, so now notice this is when angelic sin took place and so what you want to understand is this that is we normally believe we normally think that the first sin that took place in the world was when Adam and Eve sinned and we'll say that but friend long before Adam and Eve sinned we need to understand about angelic sin because it was Satan who deceived or tempted 
or as the Bible says, beguiled, Satan beguiled Eve. So he beguiled her, he tempted her, he tried to get her to sin because he had already sinned. So now let's look at the very first sin that entered into the universe. It was angelic sin, not the sin of Adam and Eve. Now notice, notice what Isaiah 14, you see it on your screen, Isaiah 14 verse 12, it says this. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? You see Lucifer on the left, <laughs> realizing he done made a big, he had made a big mistake. I think I preached a sermon one time entitled, Mr. Snake, you made a big mistake. <laughs> But anyway, notice that. Notice how he's holding his noggin. You know why? Because he realized that he held the loftiest position that any angel held. How have thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? So he wasn't always called the devil. His name was Lucifer. How have thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations. Now, so he sinned, Lucifer. But now, notice this. Not only did he sin, but 33% of all of the angels that God created, originally they were holy angels. Those ones who went along with Lucifer are now unholy angels, or as we said earlier, they are referred to as demons or devils. Notice, 33% of all of the angels that God created, meaning one-third, one-third of them individually and independently decided to go along with Satan, decided to go along with Lucifer. Now, notice what it says in Revelation 12, verse 4a, and this is, it uh, indicates and is referring to, it's a reference to what happened when Lucifer sinned. Notice it, it says, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Notice that. And did cast them to the earth. So, out of the all the angels that were created, notice one-third of them, one-third of them, as you can see on the screen, one-third of them decided to sin, and they were also cast out along with Lucifer. Okay, so now, let's uh, look at an important difference between what they did and what Adam did. Because, listen, everyone, there was a difference. There was a reason. Oh, listen to this, Mount Pisgah, listen to this. Make sure you take some notes on this. There was a reason why the angels, group A, did not find forgiveness. God wasn't being prejudiced. There was a reason why. Now, he does love man. And he showed his love for man and shows his love for men greater than any other species. As we said, Jesus gave his blood. He shed his blood for you. And you're not an angel. You're not part of the angelic force. Jesus shed his blood for you. But now notice this. Why did the angels not find forgiveness. What was the difference between what they did and what Adam did? Now, listen to this. And we'll kind of just, you know, put up some slides to kind of help you to um, understand it better. But angelic sin. Now, listen to this. You may need to take yourself sell some notes. Angelic sin was not caused the sin of the angels of Lucifer and those 
that 33% of demons, it was not caused, their sin was not caused by some kind of external influence. No. It wasn't caused by something external. See, no one tempted them. Didn't nobody tempt Lucifer to sin. You know somebody tempted Eve. We know somebody tempted Adam. Now, so I'm asking you a question. Who tempted Lucifer? Who tempted the 33%? Answer that question. Who tempted them? You know that? What well, the answer is? Nobody. They were not influenced by some external force. Their temptation came from within. It originated from within. Satan couldn't say like some of us said, the devil made me do it. <laughs> he is the devil. Listen, he wasn't influenced by somebody else. He was not tempted to do wrong. The angels that fell with him were not tempted to do wrong. You know what? They can now listen to this. This is a very important piece that will connect the puzzle. He came up with the idea to do wrong. It originated in him. He is the founding father. <laughs> yeah, some fraternities and uh, most fraternities and sororities, they have founding fathers, founding mothers, the founders. You want to know who is the founder, the founding father of sin? Satan. He's the author of sin. He is the architect of sin. Now, what we're trying to show you is what was the difference between group A's sin, angelic sin, and then group B's sin, the sin of Adam and Eve. Are you listening? I pray that you're listening. Go ahead and shout where you at. Say, PTL, praise the Lord. Preacher, I'm listening. Go ahead and say, amen. Okay, so now notice this. Notice what the Bible says about the devil in John 8, 44. It says, ye are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. Now, Jesus starts giving some background. Some background information about Lucifer. Notice that. He was a murderer from the beginning. Now, notice uh, the figure there of Lucifer. You see that red devil that, that has uh, been given birth in his heart, that's where sin came alive, right there, in the heart of Lucifer. He came up with the idea to dethrone God. Nobody tried, nobody influenced him, nor the devil's notice. He was the most, oh, listen to this, everyone. Imagine the fall. He was the most beautiful angel that was ever created. Out of the multiple billions of angels, there was not one angel that could stand next to Lucifer without knowing that Lucifer had been gifted greatly. So notice this. He was a murderer from the beginning. Who was Lucifer? He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. Now, he wasn't created that way. He was given the same thing that you and I have been given. Free choice. Freedom of choice. In his own self. In his own mind. In his own cranium. In his own brain. He decided not because somebody suggested that he would do it. No. Notice what it says. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar. Now notice this. And what? And the father of it. He is the father of murder. He's the father of lying. He's the father of anything negative that you can think of. It all originated with Lucifer, do you see how 
his sin was different from Adam's sin. It was. Now, notice this. What this means is the sin of Satan, the sin on Satan's part, and that of, and 33% of the original holy angels, we'll just say it that way, was a, get this down pack, mark this on your notes. Their decision and their sin was a totally free decision. No external influence was involved. Is that the case for Adam? Well, we will look at that. So now notice this. Keep all of that in mind. Now, let's talk about Adam's sins. Since we talked about the angelic sin, now let's talk about and look at Adam's sin. Now, what's our overall point and purpose? I mean, how do you walk away with some practical application of this? Listen. Although the angels are supernatural and super powerful beings, I mean, some of the most beautiful creatures that God ever made, they don't compare. And God's love supersedes his love for any other created being when he looks at man. And when he looks at you. Listen, friend, out of everything in the world that God created, the trees, a giraffe, a horse, a bumblebee, guess who God loves and favors the most? Don't just say man. Say your name. It's you. It's Brenda. Alma. Florice. It's you, Dominique. God loves you. He hair has, as we said, the very hairs on your head numbered. He even has the hairs on my head numbered. <laughs> my hairs are numbered. Now, notice this. Adam's sin, we're talking about Adam's sin, and we're talking about how this can be applied practically. Friend, the revelation here is you want to understand in God's creative universe how much God loves you. He loves you. You know what he did for you? He sacrificed his son to the most horrific death that anybody has ever experienced since time began, since death began, since the death of Abel. No one experienced a more horrific death than Jesus, and Jesus did it. He did it for you. He did it for Bernice. He did it for Gary. He did it for... Uh, anybody that you can think of, and he did it, everyone, while we were still sinners, he did it. So now that's one of the practical things you have got to walk away with. So now notice this, Adam's sin. Now notice, in the case of Adam or man, his decision to do wrong, what was the difference between Adam's sin and the angelic sins? In Adam's decision to do wrong, it came from an external influence and an external force. So Adam and Eve, everyone, Adam and Eve were tempted by an outside force to do the same thing that the outside force had already done. Basically, Satan said to Adam, do what I did. That's what he was saying to Adam and Eve, basically. Do what I did. He knew the consequences of what he did, but he didn't tell them the consequences. So now notice on your screen. Two things happened to man 
that didn't happen to Satan and his angels. Man was deceived. That's the first thing. See, Satan, Lucifer, wasn't deceived. He is the deceiver, but he was not deceived. He wasn't tricked. Eve was tricked. She was deceived as we will look at that in the Bible. That's the big difference, everyone. Satan's sin originated within. He came up with it. Adam and Eve's sin originated from without. And still today, we are tempted, everyone, in a whole lot of situations externally by the tempter. Now, that doesn't excuse uh, whether or not we do right or wrong, friend. We have the power to resist. The Bible says resist the devil. He didn't have the power to make you sin. As you grow in grace, as you grow in knowledge, as you, as the Bible says, study to show yourself approved. As you do that, friend, your faith will begin to grow. <laughs> You'll have Satan running like a, a little kitten. Notice this. Two things happened to man that didn't happen to Satan and his angels when we talk about sin. One, man was deceived. Two, man was enticed. Read. Now, we're going to look at these one by one. Okay, so now notice. It says this about the first thing, how man was deceived or how man was tricked. Notice what it says in Genesis 3, verse 13. Are you looking along? I hope you're following along, friend. We're praying that the Holy Spirit is just depositing all of this truth into your spirit. Notice what it says, Genesis 3, Verse 13, and the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent, who is the serpent? Lucifer. The serpent, what does that say? The serpent beguiled me. You know what that word beguiled means? It means that he deceived me. He tricked me and I did eat. Let me ask you this. Was that what happened, what happened to Satan? Did that cause Satan to sin? We're just kind of pulling it all together. No. Who tricked Satan? No one. Who tempted Satan? No one. Who made a suggestion to Satan that he sinned or tried to take over heaven? No one. Satan did all that himself. But now notice this. The woman said the serpent beguiled me. And I did eat, meaning that there was an external force, God, that caused me, not, I won't say cause, but that influence, or as we will look at in a moment, enticed, enticed me to sin. Now notice what 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 14b says. Are you looking? Are you listening? Notice, but the woman being what? Deceived. In other words, tricked. The woman being deceived was in the transgression. And that, that doesn't excuse Adam. You know, Satan just simply approached her first. But Adam yielded just like Eve yielded. So they both were held accountable. For their actions. Now notice this. We're just trying to show you the difference everyone. Follow along with this. What we're trying to do is show you the difference between Satan's reason for sinning and man. So now notice this. Uh, notice this. Second uh, Corinthians. Notice what it says. Second Corinthians 3 verse 3b. Notice from the Good News Translation. I, but I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent, what? Beguiled Eve. He tricked her. This, an, this is an external force. He tricked her even through subtlety, so your mind should be corrupt, should, uh, be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So notice that. So we see that Adam and Eve, they were tricked. They were enticed. 
they uh, were deceived. Now, the second thing is that they were enticed. Now, notice this. So they were deceived. These are the two things that happened to man that didn't happen to the angels. Adam and Eve were enticed. Now, notice this. Uh, we'll look at Genesis chapter 3. We'll read the first verse here. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. This serpent, everybody, is Satan. And he said unto the woman, now notice how he begins to entice the woman. He still does his enticement today. You'll still hear two uh, several voices speaking to you when you get up in the morning. The voice of God. The voice of other people, you may remember what they said on yesterday. Then you will start speaking to yourself. Sometimes we tell ourselves the wrong thing. But the last voice that you hear, everybody, when you get up in the morning, that's the voice of Lucifer. Notice this. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath, now he's getting ready to entice her. Hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Notice verse 2 and verse 3. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Yes, we may do that. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst, or in other words, the middle of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat, neither shall ye touch, lest ye die. Now, Satan comes back with more enticement. Now, he didn't receive enticement. The 33% of the angels that went with him, they didn't receive enticement. Notice, he's enticing Eve. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. What is that? That's enticement, friend. For God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And so he's trying to turn her thoughts upside down. Now notice this in verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good, in other words, the enticement worked. That the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and notice this and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat as well. So now, again, kind of just to recap as we Get ready to come to a close. Again, what was the difference between group A, the angelic group that sinned, that went wrong, and group B? What was the difference? Now notice this. Satan and his angels made a deliberate choice. Adam and Eve was influenced into making the wrong choice. The motivation behind one was intentional. It was an influence from within. That's group A. The motivational force behind the other, group B, was temptation. It was an influence from without. So now, get this five-star sentence. Listen to this. Because Lucifer and his angels sinned and their decision was intentional without any outside influence, they have no hope of redemption, redemption or salvation. No possibility for forgiveness. None. Again, let's read that one more time. This five-star sentence. Notice how those stars are being lit up, everybody. This is a five-star sentence. Light them up, figurine. Go right ahead and light those five stars up. He lit them up. Let's give him a hand clap. <laughs> Amen. Five-star sentence. But Lucifer and his angels sinned, and their decision was intentional without any outside influence. They have no hope. Because of that, they have no hope of redemption or salvation, no possibility for forgiveness. So, why? Because 
within themselves, everyone, they came up with the whole idea. They dreamed it up. He and his demons originated sin. How do we know? Again, we'll look at, we read it once. Notice this. You are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer. When? From the beginning. And abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar. And he is the father of it. Now, this is what I want you to do. Now, we're going to come back and we got one more part to go along with this. Now, you need to understand the greatest lesson that a Christian can ever learn. Now, catch that. Write that down. You need to understand about the greatest lesson that a Christian can learn. This is going to be the practical application to all that we have talked about. We're going to Pull it all together with one big practical application. But this is your homework. This is your homework, okay? So get ready to take a note. I want you to do this, you know, until, uh, you know, throughout the week, until we get back next Thursday. Notice this. What do the following people and places in the Bible all have in common? Are you listening? Are you listening? What is it that they have in common? What is it that King Nebuchadnezzar, Lucifer, Pharaoh, and Sodom and Gomorrah all have in common? They have one main thing in common, friend. We need to look at that because, listen, if by chance the same thing that they have in common, all of a sudden we look up and we have it in common with them, the same thing, then our end shall be tragic just like theirs. That is your homework, friend. Please, throughout the week, look through your Bible and figure out what is the one main thing that the Bible says, and then we'll show you all the scriptures on that as we gather next Thursday. What is the one thing that King Nebuchadnezzar, Lucifer, Pharaoh, and Sodom and Gomorrah have in common? And that'll be the greatest lesson that any Christian listens. There's one lesson above all lessons that you as a Christian must know and learn about. So that's the end of the lesson. You got your homework. That's the end of the study for this evening. Again, sorry about stopping, let me cause in late. I mean, uh, starting late. But amen, we just know that God has a way of revealing himself that sometimes we just don't know what he's doing, but we know he's up to good. So bow your heads where you're at. Dear great God of heaven, thank you for the privilege we have had, not just to study, not just to read, Lord, not just to talk, but the privilege we have had on this evening of being in your holy presence, <laughs> Lord. We wouldn't trade that for anything. Being in the holy presence of God. Experiencing you Holy Spirit within us. For that we are so humbly appreciative. We are. Thank you God for your kindness. Your eternal love in that you sent your son Jesus to die just for us. Just for me. Just for John. Just for Jane. Just for Joe. You sent him to die just for us. And for that, we are humbly grateful. Bless your holy name. It's in the powerful name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Good evening. We will see you. The Lord says the same next Thursday evening. God bless you. Good night.